Hello everyone, we will continue the topic O data and we are covering O data service creation steps. And as a part of that, we finished with first four steps. We created the project, we created the data model, we generated the runtime artifacts, and in the last video, we implemented the service. We have written the custom code in data provider extension class get entity set method. Now, so many people ask why, why you have not written the code in data provider base class. We understood, yes, but we want a practical demo of the same. What is the impact if we are writing the code in data provider base class? So what I will do now, I will write the same code into data provider base class also. Then I will regenerate the service and show you how what happens to our custom code, which is in data provider base class and data provider extension class. So this video is all about the detailed practical demo why we should not write the code in data provider base class. An important understanding. Suppose I will go to the system. Now you can see if I will go for this, this is our O data service. In the last video, we have written the code in data provider extension class. Now I will go to data provider base class. If I will go to data provider base class, this is our data provider base class, I will go to change. Now I will go to same to same method. Now this is our method get underscore entity set. Now here there is no need to redefine the method because this method is a part of this class itself. Yes, in the last video, we went to extension class, but the method is implemented in the data provider base class. So whenever we want to add our own code, we need to redefine in the subclasses. We need to redefine into the child class. But here, this method is the part of this class itself. Suppose if you do not want, if some if still some gap is there, you can simply, simply click on to this redefine button. It will give you error. Suppose if you are going for redefining, it is clearly saying this method is a part of this class itself. Yes. So you cannot redefine. Yes. Now I will simply double click on to this method. Now this is the code. SAP generated code into this particular method. And if you remember when we went to extension class, yes, at that time this code appeared there also. Now I will simply comment this code. If you are not commenting also, no problem. Anyways, I just want to show why we should not write our custom code here. So I will write the custom code here. VBELN, ERDAT, ERZET, ERNUM, VBTIME. I will simply go to VBAK table and I will store into internal table, into table, et underscore entity set e n t i t i will check the syntax and i am activating this data provider base class also so we have written the custom code in data provider base class also now now we will go for new requirement now what customer is saying Rather than five fields, I want a sixth field also. Suppose customer is on the web application. Now the five column output is there. Now customer want a sixth column in the front end. It means you need to add the sixth column in your O data service also. So what we will do will simply add the sixth column. Now, now as of now, in this particular entity type, we have five columns. Okay. Now we will go for sixth column. And you remember 
at that time we simply created the structure because it is very easy to copy the columns from the structure. So I will go to this particular structure and add the sixth column. I'll just wait. I think system is slow. I'm copying this structure. I will go to SC11 transaction code and I will add the sixth column. This is our structure. It is already open. Suppose customer want a sixth column AUART. You can take any column from VBAK table. I took AUART. This is our sales document type. I will simply activate this structure because requirement can change at any point of time. Now customer want a sixth column. So we added this sixth column into this structure. Now we will simply go to data model. Now I will right click yes and on to this entity type import. Okay, I'll go to change mode. I'm not in change mode. Now I'm in change mode. I will right click import properties. Now you can see sixth column is appearing. Yes, I will simply select. I will go to next. I will simply go to finish. Now we have the sixth column. No problem. It is at the top. It's okay. Yes. Now we added the sixth column, but we need to generate the classes also because our model provider base class, model provider extension class, model provider data provider base class, data provider extension class. All those have previous code only, nothing. So we need to regenerate also. Now I'm regenerating. Suppose if I will go to regenerate. Okay, so suppose for better understanding, I'm not regenerating, I'm just showing you. Suppose I will show you model provider class. So that will get more clarity. You will be able to see there is no sixth column. Suppose I'm going for data provider base Sorry, sorry, model provider base class. I'm going to this class. Now, if I will show you this method, you will be able to see five columns, not the sixth column. Suppose we have this particular entity type we defined VBELN, ERDAT, ERZET, ERNUM. We have VB type. We do not have a sixth column at all. Yes. Now, whenever I will regenerate, sixth column will add. Because still classes has the previous code only. So you need to generate the runtime artifacts. Now, this is our OData service. I'm regenerating. Okay, I think it's already open. I'll just close other artifacts. Okay, yes. See, if some artifact is already opened, have you seen this artifact already opened? So system will not generate. It will give the error, yes. Now, it is clearly saying, you can see, it is clearly saying your class is logged, yes. So just make sure whenever you are generating, all those objects should not be in the change mode, yes. And this is again important point. I will close the other things so that there will not be any confusion. No problem. This is SC level structure. I'll close this also. So I have only one session. Now, whenever I will generate, now it will be generated successfully. So it is now regenerating the artifacts. Now you can see runtime objects generated. There is no error at all. Now, if I will show you the classes, you will 100% understand why we should not write the code in data provider base class. Suppose firstly, I will show you model provider class. Now you will be able to see six columns, not five columns. Now, if I will scroll down, you can see VBELN, then we have AUART. Previously, it was not there. Yes. So our logic for model provider class generated. Now model provider base class 
is a super class for model provider extension class. It means everything will come into model provider extension class. Now I will show you data provider class. See, we have written the custom code there. Now we will see what happens to that custom code. I'll just wait because system is slow. Yes. Now I will go to data provider base class and our custom code will not be there. I just add the name here. This is the major challenge which I'm facing. Yes. While working on remote desktop. Yes. No problem. Yes. I'll just reconnect. Okay, I will just go to data provider base class SC24. I will go to data provider base class and I will show you. Suppose if I'm going to change mode, we have written the code. You can see if I will go to get entity set method, our code is not there. So just see if you are not going for extension class, you again need to do the rework. Suppose because SAP regenerated this code and again this code appeared. Now suppose if I will show you extension class, nothing will happen to our custom code. Suppose if I will show you data provider class extension, Now, if I will show you get entity set method, get entity set method, you can see nothing happened to our custom code. Nothing happened to our custom code. It is as it is. Yes, that is true that we need to add the additional column here. Suppose now we need to add a u a r t. But of course, that is additional requirement, additional logic you need to add. That is our headache. Yes, that is our task. But it is not the case that our logic is itself gone. Our logic is as it is. So now our O data service has six, six columns. Yes. So what is the summary of this particular video? Again, extremely important video from demo perspective. Yes, because so many people ask, okay, Please show us a demo how, how it is impacting if we are writing the code in data provider base class. So as a part of that, what I did, I added the sixth column to the structure. I added the sixth column to the data model. Then I showed you still classes has the previous code only, but we need to now accommodate the new code for the sixth column. So I generated the runtime artifacts. At that time, the most important part is my class was already opened in the change mode. So system is unable to regenerate. It is showing log error. So you need to close other things. Yes, whatever the artifacts are getting generated. So runtime artifacts generated. Then I showed you in model provider class, we are able to see the sixth column. Then I show you data provider base class. Our custom logic completely gone, but our custom logic is still in the extension class. There is nothing for us to worry because whenever extension class is the subclass of our base class itself. So ultimately, whatever the logic is there, it is automatically coming into extension class. So there is nothing for us to worry that are we getting the updated logic or not? Are we getting the logic of sixth column or not? Everything is there. And then I showed you our logic is as it is. Now I added the sixth column. So now our O data service has six columns. Now in the next video, we will go for next step. How to register a service. Extremely important step. Now, next video is again very important. So that's it in this video. Thank you.